Not much has changed on the bike, but I'll show you what has and uh, some of the things I bought, some of the things that are coming up. Okay, so these are the Jones SG Loop Bars. They're basically a, uh, an aluminum version of the extremely expensive uh, Jones H Loop Bars, which the, the normal ones are like 300 some dollars. Um, this was uh, about $95 delivered. I wanted these bars for a couple reasons. The, the, the original straight bars were, I was just leaning way too far forward. I'm going to be lowering my seat all the way, I'll show you that. Uh, in a little bit but I felt that bars like this might be a little bit more comfortable um, so I bought these these are on the bike I'll show you some pictures so here's a couple shots of the uh, Jones bars on this bike shot from above shot from slightly underneath so I kind of like this uh, look. In order for those bars to fit, I had to buy a new stem. So this was uh, this stem is on Amazon under like 50 different names. It was basically 18 bucks or something like that. Now here's something that I bought a while ago. I would highly recommend this headlight. This is the Victogen. Uh, USB rechargeable headlight with an internal battery so there's no wires to um, there's no battery to carry around and plug in it's all internal and this is 2400 lumens this thing is super bright uh, as I said I'd highly recommend this headlight it's insanely bright it also has uh, a couple of different fog lights there's kind of a yellowish fog light here there's also uh, another mode is red. You can put a, a solid red on here or a blinking red. I, um, I tested the blinking red. I think I had it on. I don't know how many hours I had it on, like 15 hours or something. It hardly used up the battery. The headlight has three settings. Um, 2400 lumens is the high settings. I don't know how they break it down to the medium and the low. But I ran this for about two hours on... 2400 lumens and I used about 30% of the battery. Now Victogen claims 4 hours at 2400 lumens but based on what I saw I should be able to get 6 hours out of that. It also comes with this uh, strap on battery powered like watch battery powered um, non rechargeable um, red tail light which has 3 settings a steady red a fast flash and a slow flash but this is a great headlight costs like uh, 30 bucks it was like $29 plus tax or something highly recommended okay uh, this tire pump super cheap I think like 19 bucks I don't really plan to be running around with like a tube and a whole tire repair kit if I get a flat um I got a flat but uh, super light it doesn't weigh very much and it's really small so just a cheap pump uh, lightweight pump to carry like in a bike bag or in my backpack this is sold as a mini bike seat um, the guy there's a couple guys on eBay that make these and sell them and they come in various lengths. This one here is a 10 inch. So we got a 10 inch length. I think it's three and a half high in the front or three or three and a half and then five and a half in the back. Now the reason why I wanted this seat is because I wanted to lower the seat all the way down to the tube. When I pedal this bike the seat is raised up pretty high because because it's just not fun to pedal a bike when the seat is too low. But once this is motorized, I'm not going to be worrying about that very much. So I wanted a seat that I could put all the way down to the top tube. And I wanted to try and do that without 
without permanently altering the bike. So I didn't want to cut the seat tube off. So what I plan to do is somewhere in here, where my cursor is, I'm going to cut a hole in this wood and I'll pull out some of the uh, foam padding and I'll just bury the seat post in the seat. And then I should be able to fabricate an L bracket here. This is upside down now, of course, but I should be able to attach the back of the seat with an L bracket. And then in front here, I can go with some sort of a circular clamp, I think. Okay, now this is a standard two-stroke engine kit gas tank. This is what they give you. Uh, no offense to anybody that has this, but I just hate these things. I don't want this on my bike, and I don't want it because it just looks cheesy to me. Um, a lot of people build these bikes uh, for fun, you know, and they're not too concerned with, like, the look of the gas tank. But uh, I'm just the kind of person, I, I want what I want, and, I'm, and I don't want anything else. <laughs> So this was definitely not in my plans. And the reason why is this, it's this flat seam here. If this didn't have a flat seam and it was just a tank with a crappy paint job, you know, I could repaint it and I, and it would be fine. But it's this seam. It, to me, it just screams, hey, look at this cheap thing in two pieces that we smashed together. I just, I don't like it. So it's just, I'm, I'm not we're not going there. <laughs> what I'm going to... Uh, oh, I'll show you. Uh, there's another shot of the tank. Now, this next shot is the tank that I wanted to buy uh, on eBay. I really think it would have been perfect. I loved this tank, and I foolishly didn't bid enough money on it, and I lost it like in the last 30 seconds. Somebody sniped it. So if you bought this tank on eBay, you got my tank. <laughs> um... All the measurements of this thing were pretty much perfect, I think. I think it was 13 inches this way. The nice thing was that the um, it had an offset um, outlet here. The tunnel was actually pretty nice. It wasn't too big. A lot of these tanks that you find on eBay and stuff, they're, they're too big for a bicycle. Um, and the tunnels on some of them are so wide, they're like clearly made for motorcycles. But this tank, I was pretty disappointed that I didn't get it. I think the winning bid was like 65 bucks or something. But I'm going to end up probably paying twice as much for a tank. So I probably should have bid more on it. But anyway, that's gone. So I started... Um, now, let's keep in mind here, this is not a very pretty picture. And I think it's also... I think this is like 3 by 8 What I'm going to buy for the bike is a 4 by 10 cylinder tank. So it's kind of sort of going to look like this. I would prefer this more polished. Some of these tanks are like... I've, I've searched so... Literally every day for three weeks, I'm looking for seats and tanks for this bike. While this tank doesn't look really impressive in this picture... I think it's going to be the, a good look for the bike. Uh, here's another thing, too. I live in a town where there are people who like to steal bicycles. Right now, I, um, I keep the bike in the house. I live on the third floor, though. But the bike weighs 46 pounds as is. I'm going to be adding a 25-pound motor. I'm going to be adding um, a tank to it. I'm going to be adding... Um, a shift kit so long story short I'm gonna to have to leave this outside and I'm probably gonna end up spending a couple of hundred dollars and some really good locks and an alarm you can get a, a bike alarm for like 30 35 bucks where uh, you know if somebody touches it it's gonna give a warning chirp and then if it gets wiggled too much it's gonna you know it lets off uh, like a hundred and thirty decibel alarm Okay, this is the a uh, Nico N E I K O um, socket 
Allen bit set that I bought. I needed a couple of these for the bike. This is a Tecton um, torque wrench that I bought. This was a little more expensive, uh, around 54 bucks, I think. But I didn't have a torque wrench. I kind of like the idea of torquing everything just where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's not completely necessary, but I'll just enjoy knowing that everything's right where it should be. <laughs> Some advertisement shots of that. Pretty nice uh, tool. I like it. The shift kit I bought comes with these kind of crappy exhaust clamps. I thought they gave me the wrong clamps because the first thing I noticed, my C-tube is one and a quarter inches. Um, these are marked one and an eighth inch, so I immediately thought they were wrong because of that. But what I didn't realize is that this one and one eighth means that it's for an exhaust pipe that's one and one eighth on the inside diameter, which is one and a quarter on the outside. But still, these did not fit flush on my seat tube. These areas here, I had to grind down. I actually had to grind the, all of this. But especially here, I had to take a little bit more metal off. It was only like three or four thousandths. Maybe, maybe it was really only three or so. But they just didn't fit flush on the pipe. If I clamped these onto my seat pipe the way they were, they were going to just dig into the paint and the uh, and the metal and I was only going to have contact like right here and here. So um, I bought a uh, Dremel knockoff, which I'll show you later. It was like 22 bucks, comes with a um, flex arm and everything and had little sanding discs and I just sanded these down, put it on the tube to see how it fit and just kind of eyeballed it, you know, a little bit more off here, a little bit more off here until I got them right. I used this Rust-Oleum primer, filler, and sandable, and this stuff's great. It it dries super fast, like two minutes. It's dry to the touch, and it was really smooth. Um, the black paint I used is um, paint and primer in one, but and there's a couple coats on here. Um, and here is the uh, Dremel knockoff I bought. It's made by Wen. And uh, 22 bucks delivered. I mean, you know, this will be great. Another shot of the um, when. These are just advertising shots. Um, I did notice these grindstones are pretty, pretty cheap. The, um, I started using one of these to grind those exhaust brackets, and in like three or four minutes, it, it disintegrated. So one of them disintegrated already. Some of the uh, these are the um, sanding drums that I ended up using after that grindstone broke. And here's a stock photograph of the Sick Bike Parts shift kit. Well, that's it for this time. We'll see you all next time.